Okay guys, so finally I am upgrading my internet hardware and here today in this video I am going to be unboxing this Tenda AC10 router over here which is a AC1200 router and this router I have got for just 2000 rupees on a deal and I posted it on the community tab if you haven't seen that. So yeah and I'll link it below in the description. You can check the description box below of course to get the best deals. So this is actually a gaming router so called. So right here it shows package contents AC1200 Mumimo dual band router and this is a gigabit router as you can see and the ethernet cable is there and a power adapter is there and a quick installation guide is there. So that's all you get over here and there is also a app for that in Google Play Store and also in the App Store in iPhones. So yeah and there are some system requirements mentioned over here which is not that important to mention I guess. And to the right we have some specifications listed it says like a b g n and a c bands and the interface type and one WAN gigabit port and three lan gigabit ports are present over here so that's good and we have the four antennas like six dbi antennas over here it says and the data rate shows as 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz both are there so without further delay let me just quickly unbox it over here it doesn't show the version on the box Let's just cut this plastic wrap over here. By the way, this is how the back of the box looks like as you are noticing. Again, it just shows the model on the box but it doesn't show the version which I am about to find out. But let me actually tell you that here on this side, there is no seals at all. It is completely open. You just get that plastic wrap kind of seal. That's it. So it comes with this cardboard kind of box inside. And if you are looking at it right over there, I have the TP-Link WR841N. I have been using that router for almost 5 years now or even more than that. I don't remember. That router is one of the best 2.4 GHz router that you can get pretty much. But in 2021, I feel it is the time when I should upgrade to a 5 GHz or a AC band Wi-Fi router. So first you get this paperwork which says general public license notice. Not that important I guess. And let me show you we also have this quick installation guide from Tenda and over here also it shows this package contents and stuff. Now I'll move to the router itself and yeah let me actually tell you that router size over here is quite big when compared to the previous router that I have used. So you get these kind of looks over here looks pretty much awesome in the front end stuff definitely looks like something from like Batman or something. So definitely it does have this stealth kind of look over here. It definitely looks futuristic in my opinion and all the antennas you can see from here. The router actually is pretty light. It's not that heavy or something. This router is completely light. Now this is how the backside of the router looks like and I would pretty much say that you don't get to see a separate version for this. But if you're noticing the FCC ID on the last I think it is the version which is mentioned. In the FCC ID, if you see all the layers, it shows V3 at the last. So yeah, that could be the version of this tender router. And of course, you can set this router up with that 192.168.0.1 kind of website. And on the bottom, we do get these plastic feet on the four sides right here. And also we have this mounting kind of holes. So let me just put this router right here and let me show you. You get this LAN cable and you do get this power adapter which is a two pin power adapter. Cable length over here, if you are noticing, it is not that much big. So if you are someone who needs a long kind of LAN cable, this cable is quite short. And if you have a bigger disc or something where you have to put your router far away from the PC itself, then it will be a problem pretty much in my opinion. Like for my desk, this cable won't be sufficient for sure. And one more speciality of this router in my opinion is that in this router you don't get any kind of logo on the top. It is completely matte black kind of finish and it does not have any logo over here. But if you look at the front only then you will see this Tinder logo right here and you get this kind of like hinges and stuff and it looks definitely better than other like simplistic routers like that one. So yeah and we have this sys, wan and the lan and the wi-fi kind of leds right here which will turn on when you power in the device. And on the left side we have these vents as you can see and even on the right 
we have these vents right here and even on the bottom we have the vents and to the back side this is how it looks like we have this wps reset key and we have this power kind of port of course and this is the wan port where you connect the rj45 cable which you get from your provider your internet provider pretty much and you get this one two and three ports for the LAN so you get only three LAN ports over here so you connect three PCs or one PC one PS4 one like laptop or TV or something so yeah if you need four LAN ports this is not the router you should go for and there are no USB ports over here which might be kind of a bummer but one thing I can't really see here that on the TP-Link router that I have been using that has a power button but this one seems to not have the power button so that's how it is you just plug it in and it just turns on so no power button present over here it just has this wps or reset button okay so when i connected this like lan port with my pc and my internet this is the page that opened automatically but you can open this 192.168.0.1 when you are connected to lan or also you can set up this router with the app of tender downloading via play store so yeah and right now it shows these connection types as you can see it shows it is detected as static IP so I'm gonna just enter my IP right here so I just entered my IP address and stuff over here and we have the Wi-Fi name and the Wi-Fi password right here which you can set of course and then once you are done just click on OK and it shows saved so let me just save it right here right now I just connected to the internet because I had to call my ISP and get the MAC address reset or something so right now I have my internet working totally so no issues with that and there you also have all the devices and you can turn off any device that you don't want to get connected or something then also in the internet settings you can set the operating mode to the router WISP I'm not really sure what that does but there is also a universal repeater and a access point kind of settings and in the wireless settings you can enable this preferred band if you want just the one ssid and with that one ssid you can get like 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz both but i'll do it separately so i have it disabled and you can set each like 2.4 gigahertz band name and password and you can set 5 gigahertz band name and password and i also have this guest network enabled so for some reason if you want it you can enable the guest network but the thing is i want to turn off this 5 gigahertz guest network but I can't simply do that over here so that is weird and also you can set this 2.4 gigahertz signal strength to high medium or low from here and there is also the network mode and stuff and the 5 gigahertz network I changed this network mode to 11 AC over here and there is also beam forming feature right here and you can enable or disable WPS if you want to and we also do have parental controls for some reason if you want the devices to have not access for like some days of the week then you can do that and also the time and stuff like that so yeah and there is also the sleeping mode as you are noticing so there is also the led control so i can turn off the routers leds if i want to and in the advanced settings we have the blacklist of the devices so you can like blacklist the mac addresses of the devices which you don't want to get connected to the routers there is also ipv6 for some reason if you want to enable it and in the admin settings you can like have the password and stuff if you want to set some password here you can do that and there is this automatic maintenance over here so if this function is enabled the router reboots during 2 a.m to 5 30 a.m and you can reboot the router from here reset it or like back up your configuration so as you can see again the current former version is this v02030118 multi in here in the tenda website if you go into the ac10 version 3 router which you can just google ac10 version 3 there you will find this version 020301.108 multi so this is the latest firmware the build date is 2021 of like january 29th so yeah this is the latest firmware from 2021 and this router is actually the version 3 of the ac10 router so i've showed you almost everything so right now let me just check the performance in terms of the google dns ping i'm getting about 30 ms which is fine with my local isp i guess so let me actually do a speed test with my lan over here so about 75 mbps downloads i'm getting so that is totally fine because i do have a 75 mbps capped connection so yeah and it is giving me about 74 73 mbps uploads usually it stays about 76 but here i'm getting about 74 yeah 
so let me actually test it on my phone i'm just sitting right in front of the router right now by the way i'm connected to my 2.4 gigahertz band over here so let's just click on go so it is giving me around okay so, so 70 mbps that's almost there with the cap i have with the download speeds but right now it's giving me about 62 that's fine now here with the upload speeds it definitely goes up about 76 with 2.4 gigahertz itself that's just huge so i just connected to the 5 gigahertz network over here so let's just click on go and let's see what's the download speeds i'm getting so yeah 74 mbps downloads not much difference because of my speeds of the like internet that i have it's not too much it's about 75 mbps but definitely if you have a 250 or 300 mbps connection you can definitely benefit from this router okay so i did set up my router and it has been couple of hours now and here are my experiences that i have seen with this particular router let me actually explain i did like have some screen recording from my previous router and this one as well i'll show you those but let me tell you if you want to know about like the range and how long the router's range goes then i would suggest that going to the btech channel he has explained a lot more like in terms of the range and stuff but here are the differences that i have noticed now the main reason why i upgraded to 5 gigahertz router or a gigabit router is because of the 2.4 gigahertz band has issues when you are connected to a bluetooth device so let me tell you what happens let's say if you're connected to a bluetooth headset and then if you're speed testing or just downloading something in the background on your phone or on your pc on 2.4 gigahertz band it gets really messy and you don't actually get the speeds that you should be getting so that's what happens in my opinion that is a really annoying experience like i'll show you on the left that what happened when i used 2.4 gigahertz on both the routers like on tp-link wr841n and on the right of the screen you can see the tenda ac10 speeds on 2.4 gigahertz again and yeah on both the times like it definitely drops the speed if you're connected to a bluetooth headset and you are playing some audio via bluetooth then the 2.4 gigahertz speed definitely drops but if you are using 5 gigahertz band let me actually show you how much speeds you get you get the full speed over here because the bluetooth actually runs on 2.4 gigahertz bluetooth 4.0 5.0 everything is on 2.4 gigahertz i think so bluetooth definitely does mess around with the 2.4 gigahertz band but with 5 gigahertz there are no problems even when you are connected to bluetooth and playing any kind of audio like any music or any video or stuff like that when you are doing that you won't be having any issues like with the network you will get full speeds that you can get with like lan or something like here i'm getting 75 mbps because i have a 75 mbps connection as you can see from the screen i'm getting pretty much amazing speeds even when i'm connected to bluetooth so that's one of the main reason for this upgrade right here and i would say this router's 2.4 gigahertz band speeds are fine but they are not as good as my tp-link wr841n to be honest like it covers more area but it doesn't offer so much speed like on the tp-link wr841n i used to get about like 60 to 70 mbps constantly on 2.4 gigahertz here i'm only getting about 60 mbps i would say so yeah definitely it has dropped like 10 mbps on this particular router's 2.4 gigahertz band but on 5 gigahertz there are no problems at all but again the 5 gigahertz band does not offer too much range let me actually tell you what happens with the 5 gigahertz band so right around this particular room i am pretty much getting 5 gigahertz without any issues but when i go above this floor then the 5 gigahertz definitely drops like the walls and stuff does mess around with the range of 5 gigahertz and when i go like below the floor it's fine but like when i'm going sideways like another room next to my room if i go there the 5 gigahertz band still connects and it still gives you good speeds but definitely the range it drops if you can see that on the network of wi-fi now i tested this router speeds four rooms away almost far away this router's 2.4 gigahertz band and this is the speed that i got and then i got to the roof of that four rooms away like far away and then the roof's corner right there so even when i'm far away this router I could connect to the 2.4 gigahertz band and here is the speed that i have got this particular router does get a little bit more hot than i would like it to be i would say 
so definitely the temperatures are going about 45 50 degrees i guess when i'm using the network or even when i'm not i would say the router is definitely hot to the touch coming from my previous router it used to not get hot at all but this router is getting a little bit hot in my opinion and i would say and the coolest feature of this particular router is definitely the reboot time whenever i had to reboot my previous router it was a pain it used to take almost two minutes to actually reboot or just turn off the like switch and then turn it on back so to get access to the internet when i restart the router previously i had to wait almost two or two and a half minutes to actually get the network working but right now this particular router reboots in just 40 seconds like if i even press reboot it takes 40 seconds but if you are just plugging the router out and then plugging it in then i would say or just turn off the switch from the wall and then turn it on back i would say it will take almost 30 seconds to actually reboot the router so the reboot time is one of the fastest that i have seen for the routers the tp-link routers definitely takes a lot more longer to actually reboot i have no idea why but here you get the best reboot time only 40 seconds you can just reboot even from directly to, from the app itself and by the way you can turn off those leds that you are noticing like those blue leds right behind this monitor my router is so yeah right there the leds you can turn them off like let me actually demonstrate that so i just opened the tender app right here so you just click on more and then click on led control and you just turn it off it takes a second and right now i think yeah the like lights are turned off if you're noticing right now if i turn it on so yeah again the lights are on right now so that's how you can turn off or on the leds if they are annoying you but you only get that like lights in front they are the lights are not present on the top or something and there is no branding on the top of the router that is good you only get that tender branding on the right side or like left side from wherever you are looking at it so yeah now how much speeds this router can give you well i do have a 75 mbps connection so i can't really show you like how much speeds you can get but definitely if you have uh, like 300 to 400 mbps even 500 mbps connection i'm pretty sure this router can actually offer you 400 500 mbps of speeds no issues whatsoever and one more feature that i like of the app itself is that you can limit some particular devices to some particular mbps so yeah you can use the app and you can figure it out how to do it so you just tap on that particular device and there you will get to see all the options like you can throttle those devices if you don't want them to use like full bandwidth of your internet so that is great you get a lot of customizations in the app itself and differently coming from my previous tp-link 2.4 gigahertz router this is a much much better experience now definitely i have been using my tp-link wr841n router for almost six years now and that router has provided amazing service in my opinion for that kind of budget you can get that router in thousand rupees so that is the best 2.4 gigahertz router in my opinion in terms of range in terms of speeds and stuff if you are looking for a ac band router which is coming in 2 to 2.5 k inr or 2500 under 2500 indian rupees i would say this is the best router that you can get for this kind of budget and yes i got a deal like normally it, this router stays about 2500 2600 rupees but on the deal i got it for 2000 rupees and i'm pretty happy about it if it had a usb port maybe i would have liked it more and four ports if you need like four lan ports you don't get those over here you only get three lan ports over here and the good thing is again all the ports over here are gigabit ports like the wan port is of course the input port of your internet so that is again gigabit port and all the three LAN ports that you get is gigabit port. Well, if you don't know what that means, all the three LAN ports over here can offer you one GBPS full bandwidth over here. So that is great. If you have like if you're using a one GBPS connection, then it, this router might be uh, like one of the best things for you because then you can enjoy the full bandwidth of your network. So if your internet provider offers you a uh, like 500 mbps connection then i would say you can look for this particular router and again if you're someone who is annoyed with the bluetooth interference and stuff like me then you can upgrade to this particular router so yeah this is a really great value for money router in 2000 or 2500 rupees that's what i think let me know in the comments what do you guys think give this video a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel if you have not yet this is chito from kdn tech signing off for today and i'll be catching you guys in the next one bye, -bye now